And welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. And this time putting world in World Bigfoot Radio, we're going all the way down uh, below the equator and to the other side of the planet practically. And we've got a guest from Australia on. But before we get to that... I'd like to mention that I uh, do have uh, somebody that is trying to help out the channel right now. And if you need to have better security with your internet and you need a VPN, go try ProXPN. That's P-R-O-X-P-N. They will give you a great discount using the, uh, the code SAVE1975, SAVE1975. You get 50% off. Totally uh, works great. I use it. Really enjoy it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm actually like, uh, apparently coming from some other part of the world than where I'm actually coming from. So that, that works out nicely. It's kind of fun. You get to see ads from other parts of the world, um, that supposedly you're coming from when you're not really. So you can see what, see what the local ads are in other parts of the world via VPN with pro XPN, as well as having security and not letting third party, uh, you know, <clears throat> there do wells spy on your privacy and cause you problems. Also, if you want to get a hold of me, you can at World Bigfoot Central at Yahoo.com. World Bigfoot Central at Yahoo.com is my email. And this is an entirely viewer funded channel at this point. I'd like to thank everybody very, very much. God bless you all to everybody that helped me out in uh, especially the end of 2018, which was horrifying. I made it through. I've got some better equipment. Hopefully things are going to run better now. And um, due to your continuing care and donations, I can keep bringing you shows and really interesting guests and uh, hopefully keep upping the quality here all the time. So thank you very much. God bless everybody that's helped. And uh, the same thanks and God bless to everybody that's considering helping here in the future. I really, really appreciate it. And you guys are keeping World Bigfoot Radio coming to you and now with no further ado and that was probably way too much already sorry about that uh let's bring on our guest this is somebody who lives like i said in australia and has had several experiences with the local bigfoot like critter they have down there that they colloquially refer to as the yowie although i've already clued in that the different uh, local aborigine uh, tribes had different names for them just like the the native tribes here had different names for them and so, like, Yowie is, like, their version of saying Bigfoot. That's just, like, what, whatever the local aborigines in that area call it is probably something different. But uh, continent-wide, you call it a Yowie, I guess. So with that, let's bring on Sherry. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Hey, how's it going? Mighty glad to have you here, finally. I've, I've been uh, communicating with Sherry over the Internet for quite a while now, and she's been letting me know about some of the things that have happened to her, which I, I find absolutely fascinating. And so I'm really glad that I was actually able to uh, get her to come on the show finally and share some of this stuff with, with you guys. It's uh, actually like uh, three. Yeah, well, to be honest, I think the first time I realized there was something else out there other than us, I was too young to speak. I was about eight months old. Um, I was living in central Queensland at the time and uh, I had a little peeker uh, peek through my window and that freaked me out as a young child. I just didn't know what to do with it. So since then, uh, yeah, they just kind of made themselves apparent uh, throughout my life. And yeah, they've just been part of part of the furniture, I guess. <laughs> part of the furniture. <laughs> Sorry to speak. <laughs> How do you account for that? What do you think it is that, because, you know, like some people, um, you know, they like to think that Bigfoot are such an incredible rarity and you're lucky if you manage to see once in a, one in a lifetime. And then you have other folks that have had like repeated experiences and encounters with them. Uh, what do you what do you think the difference is? Oh, that that is a hard one. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I was younger is that, um, you know, we'd be playing around, we'd be kids, five, six years old. Everyone was running around screaming and I would just want to be in the bush, you know, so I, I'd pay attention to all the sounds, the birds, uh, even down to the crickets, things like that. So when there was something out of the ordinary, I would notice it. No one else would. No one else would find it odd, but it, it would stand out to me. So if there was a, a like a big a snap from a tree or something, that was odd to me. 
you know, there was no reason for a tree to be falling. Uh, it's not storming. It wasn't dry. So it seemed out of the usual to me. They're things that I picked up on that I guess others just didn't. I think that's all it is. <laughs> you think it's uh, also that they have more interest in you because you were tending to spend more time in the woods than some of the other people were? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, I mean, growing up, to be honest, I really didn't have any friends until I was about probably 11, 12. So I was always on my own. And I just, I didn't really like to be around where the masses of people were. I'd rather be exploring in the bush, just tromping around and eating <laughs> things. And <laughs> so, yeah, little bush yeah. basher. Well, I was much the same, which is what got me into trouble and had me sighting one when I was 10 years old, being too far out in the woods where I shouldn't have been. Luckily, I had a friend with me, but still, you know, uh, mini was the time when I was out there by myself tromping around and probably shouldn't have been. <laughs> exactly. Um, I guess if my parents had known where I was and what I was doing, they wouldn't be happy. You know, the bush is a dangerous place and they were very worried about snakes. So I was always told to stay out of the bush. That just made me want to go in there more. <laughs> well, yeah, in Australia, you've got all that poisonous stuff to worry about. You got poisonous snakes and poisonous spiders and bone crushing crocodiles and man eating great white sharks and <laughs> friggin' megalania running around in the center of the continent where they're not supposed to exist. And... Yeah, well, I mean, I, I grew up in an area that was populated by crocodiles. There you go. Uh, they, were, mm, they were actually outside of their range, uh, so they shouldn't have been there. Technically, but uh, that's just the way it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many times have we heard um, that? There's no mountain lions in this state. What's that thing right there eating your horse? That's that's a that's a big wolf. That's not a mountain lion. Yeah, okay, right. That's a big ginger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just ridiculous. Well, we get the same thing over here. I mean, there are there are. I was pretty surprised when I had a, a moose walk over and flatten my tent in the middle of the night in Utah. Whoa. I had no idea there were moose in Utah. I thought that was too far south. But apparently, judging by the one that dropped over the tent and flattened it in the middle of the night, nope, there's moose in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't judge reality. If it happens, it's real. Yeah. So just because the the, the field guide to the state that you're in says, oh, there's, there's only this here and this here and this doesn't exist. Yeah. The animals didn't read that field guide. They Thank might have you. decided to wander across because they don't know where the border is. And uh, so, yeah, always be on the lookout. Always. <clears throat> so what was the uh, what was the first uh, major experience with a Yowie when you were young then? Let's do it in chronological order. All right, all right. Okay, so the first time I ever remember seeing them was when I was eight months old. Um, I, I have asked my parents about this. They told me exactly how old I was. So I know I was eight months old. I couldn't walk at the time, couldn't speak. So uh, we had a fun little game in our house. We had a uh, bull terrier at the time. My older brothers, I had three older brothers, they'd prop me up on the skateboard and hand me the dog's leash and then run around the, the house so that the dog would uh, take me on a wild ride. <laughs> so there we are. Oh, yeah, that was my favorite game at the time. So there we are. We're having a mad time. I mean, this dog's dragging me all around the house. I hadn't fallen over. We went for one last run around the house. My brother's run into the kitchen. The dog's followed him. I've come into the kitchen, rounded the corner. And as I looked up, there was this face just staring through the window at me. And that's what made me lose my balance and smack into the kitchen table. <laughs> Oh, God. Honestly, I don't remember any pain. All I remember is just that face. So I was just scrambling to get up on my legs, but because I couldn't walk, uh, yeah, my brothers came and picked me up, and I'm pointing at the window, you know, look, look. Uh, but, but by that time, it was gone. So, um, yeah, that was a bit odd. <laughs> so how long were you – how long did you live in that area? I'm just curious. You said that you had yeah. moved from Queens, Queensland where you started out at. How long were you there? I think we were there for about three years. I think we moved uh, into the Gladstone region in about 1991, I think it was. Okay. So we weren't there for too long. But it sounds like local Yowies were keeping an eye on you. And you were <laughs> well, I bet that was entertaining. I mean, watching a little kid getting drugged around on a skateboard by a dog, I'd want to watch that. I mean, I'd stop and look in the window to watch that. That sounds really entertaining to me. 
Well, I remember the whole family was cracking up laughing. They were having a great old time. Everybody was laughing until I saw that thing and fell off. That's when the mood completely changed. Wow. So you were almost four when you moved out of there. Did you have any more Yowie experiences while you were still there? Not that I can remember there. Uh, that was the only experience I can remember in that house. But uh, the next one we moved to was quite active. Was it a long ways away from the first one? Uh, it was probably 20 to 40 kilometers away, I think it is. Uh, okay. So, That's not that far. Not uh, really, no. Not in their terms. Uh, so mm. they might have followed you, actually. It might even have been the same ones. Yeah, possible. Possible. Uh, I didn't notice that they were the same ones, only because I saw one guy. One yeah. fellow looking through the window, and that was it. Yeah. And plus, you're so little, it's like you'd only remember that, you know. Mm. Here's this weird-looking mm. thing looking through the window at me, and that would be a ball. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was a, a real shock, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's definitely not a human. I, what the heck is that? <laughs> well, well, that was the funniest part. Um, I must mention that my mother's family are all English, so they're all from England, and my father's family, uh, they're Māori, so they're from New Zealand. Um, you might know uh, Māori tend to have flattened noses. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what I took away from that was that he looked a bit like my cousin. Yeah, kind of a flat nose. The same flat nose. It was just flattened in the same way. Um, he had even the same kind of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, weird. And the funniest part was he had really, really dark brown irises, which kind of struck me because they were the exact same color as my uh, brother's. My brother has very, very dark brown eyes. Almost black. Did he have mm. hair on his face? Not on his face. Uh, on his head, all over his head, but where the actual, I guess, the forward-facing part of the face rests, there was no hair on it whatsoever. Huh. I, I kind of thought it was a person spying on us. Right. But uh, as he lifted his, his head from the window, his head went up and then it disappeared. <laughs> And the body just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that's way too tall to be a year, but what was that? Well, yeah, I remember that when my parents would walk past that window, I could see their head, and their head was probably three quarters of the height of mm -hmm. the window. Mm -hmm. So you could still see the top quarter of the window as they walked past. Right. And as this guy pulled his head away, his whole body blocked out the whole window. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's big. <laughs> That I, is indeed a biggie. I'm pretty sure the window was about uh, one meter by one one meter. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what that is in inches. Uh, let's go about three and a half. Foot. No, it's pretty close to a yard. <laughs> yep, yep, that'll do. It's a couple cubits. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that was a, a an odd one. He, um, he actually had like almost almost black hair on his head. It was very, very dark brown, but the way I saw it, it was kind of black, and it stuck up in all directions. It didn't kind of lie flat. It was all sticking out, but I couldn't tell if that was because he was caught or not. Hmm. You know, like when yeah. cats get scared, they, they puff their hair out? Yeah. Yeah, actually, hmm. from what I've heard, they can, well, the ones here in uh, North America... Um, can actually do that. They can poof their hair out like a cat when they get surprised or when they want to be, like, up here bigger than, like, as if you need to, <laughs> than they already are. Uh, hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, again, is, like, something that, you know, could have been, could have been going on because the ones around here apparently can do that. Um, so what, when, when did you start, like, having uh, out in the woods sort of, like, seeing these things, things going on? Oh, geez. I, I was probably younger than five, about four or five. Uh, so I remember just recently had moved to your new place then. Yeah, yeah, just moved in. Moved in. I think the first time I noticed something odd or odd new noises was in the first year. 
So within 12 months of moving there, I, I started to notice stuff that didn't seem right to me. Well, before we get any further into this, what was the lay of the land there? Was your house sort of isolated or were there other properties nearby or were you in a suburb? Mm -hmm. or what was it like? Yeah, so we were living in a suburb. Uh, we were actually living on the very edge of the suburb itself. We had okay. plenty of houses behind us, uh, probably a good 20 streets or so. But in front of our house, uh, there was nothing. There was the road to drive into our house and across from that, there was bushland and a creek that ran through it. A creek. And if you, mm, yeah, it had crotchies, uh, uh, guppies, platies, mm -hmm. rainbow fish. So it was quite plentiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, beyond that was a main road. Uh, and on the other side of that was the airport. But having said that, it's a, it was a very small town at the time for a town <laughs> well for these guys as we well know especially listeners to my show they'll come right up to the edge of town and even penetrate short distances into it if they think they can get away with it it all depends on what's drawing their attention there and you know if there's like food or something that they they can rely on you know granny left an apple pie on the windowsill to cool <laughs> where'd that go yeah we know that one <laughs> But that, you know, mm, they're, yum, yum. They're, they take advantage of the things in their environment. And if they come to, to learn that, you know, hey, if we go right over to the edge of town over here, there's like an orchard. And yeah. you know, when those things are ready to go, we can go pick all of them at night and make off with them. So, or, you know, even like there's a dumpster and this is when there's usually something worth picking through. <laughs> you know, they've been caught <laughs> dumpster diving too. So any of this kind of stuff. And if you're right on the edge of town, uh, you know, they'll come right up to the edge of it. Like you said, you've got bushland and you've got a creek on the other side of the road from you. Well, they use creeks and streams and rivers and stuff like that for travel routes. Yeah, true. Actually, funny you say that too, because uh, at the end of our street where it came into the, the bushland area, there was actually a whole bunch of these massive mango trees and they would fruit like crazy. Uh -huh. Um Mm hmm And that, that's where, <laughs> well. Sorry for saying that, but, you know, that's kind of why I brought it up. This is hmm. the kind of stuff that usually attracts them. And, again, you're, you're, it sounds like you're living in one of these places where it's like right there there's food, there's water, there's a travel way, there's, you know, scrub bushes that, that they can hide in. They can get right in and out of there again without humans seeing them. But you're right next to town. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't a big town. We didn't have... Uh, you know, cinemas and things like that. We had one fast food restaurant. Right. I mean, and that wasn't open on. No, it was weekends, just a small so. town. But the, you know, that's not the point. People worldwide have this this notion that you know it's the romance of the whole thing. You have to go yeah. deep to the bush in the middle of nowhere to find <laughs> these prehistoric monsters. No, I hate to blow it for you guys. They kind of like live right next to town, and they like to dumpster <laughs> dive and stuff. <laughs> They'll raid your field and take your carrots and stuff, man. You got. Um. Uh, seriously, <laughs> it's it's much more down to earth and just sort of kind of what you would really think in the real world it would be like. They're a bit more logical. Like they're, yeah, hmm. they're smart like we are. They take advantage of their environment and they're way better at it than we are for the most part. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so if there's any kind of food resource around anywhere where they live, they know about it. And they're happy oh, yeah. to take advantage of it. Actually, that's, I think that's how I found out a lot about uh, a lot of the food sources that were around. You know, I'd go for a walk in the bush, I'd be looking around, and I'd find something that had been foraged. You know, say, um, oh, perfect one for you, uh, giant grubs. So uh, where we lived in central Queensland, we had a lot of these dead old trees. Uh, they would die from being eaten by these giant grubs, which would then turn into, I guess, giant beetles. Well, I noticed they, uh, they tend to go disappearing. They'd be there one day, and the next day, the whole stump was snapped off. The roots were left in the ground, but the whole thing was gone, grubs and all. Wow. wow. <laughs> well, what local Australian animal could even do that? None other than human. But either way, I, I honestly do not think a human could have uh, broken that tree. Because uh, when the when the grubs actually eat up into them, they eat these massive holes through them. Right. And the tree's still alive. You know, so you can't you can't just go over and break it. It takes some massive force to snap it. 
Wow. See? Yeah, there's there's been hmm. reports. I think Wes had one on Sasquatch Chronicles where somebody had seen a Bigfoot like thumping a tree. It was, you know, had hollow. He was shaking. Training. Yep. Uh, let's let's get back to it here. So yep. you you were um, like a little bit over four when you had your next experience there. Yeah, in uh, in that house. Yeah. Um, so the next one I can remember uh, down at the skate park. Actually, that I think that was the next one. So uh, we got home from school one day. We had this beautiful skate park that had just been built literally at the end of our street. So I guess from then on, it did get a lot busier in our street. So anyway, we get home from work, oh, sorry, school, get home from school, jump on the bikes, cruise down to the skate park, and we're having a ball of a time. So my brothers are trying to push me to do harder tricks and things like that. And uh, just that morning, I'd asked my father to take the back brakes off my bike. You know, the little kitty brakes, you pedal backwards, yeah. it stops you. Yeah. yeah. So I got them taken off the bike. I'd totally forgotten. Went to do this trick and I've, I've cleared the fun box, having a great time. Gone up to the very last ramp in the whole skate park. I must mention it wasn't quite finished yet, so there was no guardrail on the back. So I've hit my brakes trying to stop. They weren't there. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I remember in that second, the whole skate park went completely silent. As I've gone up and over this ramp, I've done a massive somersault and landed straight kind of on my side, on my elbow, slammed into the ground, which was gravel at the time. So, yeah, I'm kind of trying to fight back tears. Ow. <laughs> yeah, a little banged up, got blood pissing out of one arm, and the whole skate park is still completely silent. So I'm facing towards the bush at this time, and all of a sudden I heard the, this weird, uh, I guess like a sound a mother would make if her, if her child fell over. It was kind of like a, an ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. That struck me as odd. Now, my mother never, ever said anything like that. You know, like, oh, oh, no. She'd get angry at you if you hurt yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, oh, what have you been doing? That's a bit stupid. So, yeah, I've, I've gone towards this sound thinking for some reason that it was my mother. And as I'm walking towards the bush line, my brothers have come over to me and they've said, Sherry, where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm going to mum. And they looked at me really weirdly. Hey, what do you mean? They said, she, she's not here. I kind of freaked out a little bit. And I'm looking at the bush, looking at the people in the skate park. All right, I must be crazy. So I just toddle on off, you know, back up to the house to go see my mother, get her to patch me up. When I got up there, I asked her, I said, Mom, were you down at the, the skate park? And she got angry at me. She said, why, why would I want to be down there? Don't be stupid. So, yeah, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. There was no other female in the, at the skate park that day. There was no people in the bush over that way. But it was just the most calming, like, oh, poor baby. Oh, oh no. Can't, yeah, let me make it better. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she pretty much put me on track. There's no way in hell she would have been down at the skate park. So yeah, they uh, patched me up and uh, away I went to fight another day. But yeah, just I had this urge to, I guess, to let her, whoever it was, saying, ooh, ooh, to let them take care of me, if right. that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you're a kid, you fall over, you, you see a woman, you think, you know, naturally she's going to help you so that's what i thought just heard the sounds and naturally thought that was a mother saying mm -hmm. oh come here here i'll take care of you yes my brothers thought i had a concussion <clears throat> i was <laughs> well if you wrapped into the ground that hard it was probably heartfelt you know assuming it was a female yowie sitting out there she saw you bite it and went oh ooh, oh man oh that had to hurt you know <laughs> Well, yeah, I was, I was probably the smallest kid in the whole skate park at that time. I was definitely the youngest, but I was, I was 
I guess, really being pushed by my brothers to try, try harder things and just push the bill, really. So that came crashing down. <clears throat> Uh, but I can assure you, uh, when my mother was patching me up, I, I did ask her, I said, Mom, do I have a concussion? She looked at me funny and said, what's your name? I said, my name's Sherry Mitchell. She said, where do you live? I told her our, our address and she assured me, no, no, you do not have a concussion. <laughs> you're just fine. <clears throat> you might be hearing things, but you're fine. So, yeah, that's the next one I could remember in that house. Um, yeah, I did have a few after that, though. Um, yeah, did you want us to go through those ones? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, especially the, the really memorable ones that were, you know, extra cool. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I got one for you then. Okay, so um, I remember one day we were playing cricket uh, in the, I guess, the, the green, green space across from our house. That's uh, near where the creek was. Right. So we'd been at it for a while, for having a good old game of cricket. And I was actually outfielder, so I was right next to the brush. Um, I guess I, I, we'd been there for about 40 minutes at least. Um, and I kept just getting distracted. I just could not keep my eye on the ball. Um, it's uh, okay. It's really weird, I guess. I must be able to like hear frequencies or something like that because I guess as you walk down a road you can tell which houses have their radios or their TVs on even if you can't hear the physical noise you just hear this whining frequency mm -hmm. so here I am you know trying to focus on the ball and I just kept this getting this whining frequency coming from behind me in the bush but it was really, really strong. It was like, oh, like 10, you know, big screen TVs on full blare, but without the noise. So this has been distracting me, you know, and, and a, a ball, I remember a ball actually went flying past me and I didn't, uh, didn't catch the ball. My brothers were yelling at me. It's because I was too distracted trying to figure out what this thing was behind me, what the hell it was. So, um, yeah, I've kind of gone looking for the, the ball, which was now in the brush. So I had to go wading through there. Funnily enough, my brothers would not come help me. For some reason, they didn't want to go in there. Oh. So I'm in there. That's it, wading around through all the thick, thick brush and uh, trying to find this ball. So um, I think after about another 10 minutes after that, I found the ball, threw it back to him. We started getting playing again. It would have only been a couple of minutes later, maybe 10 minutes. I started hearing like someone speaking in the bush behind me. And the weirdest part was they started saying my name, but it was, it was like they were a foreigner, I guess, trying to, trying to get the dialect right. You know, so if we speak, try to speak Japanese, it's probably not going to sound too Japanese. Right. We're still going to have our Aussie or, or Amer American I guess, uh, twang to our sound. So it kind of sounded like a, a really deep voice and it was kind of groany. And it started saying, Sherry, 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 Sherry. You know, and it started getting more fluent and more fluent. And, and that's when he started repeating it, like, faster and faster. It was like a kid who had learnt a new word and they were really excited about it. Sherry, 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 Sherry. So that freaked me out a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that freaked me out a little bit, too. I can see how that might be tripping out. What the hell is back there making this? What's doing that? That's it. And I've, I've looked behind me. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear any footsteps. Just that, that whining frequency and the noise. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. So I'm focusing on that complete me. Didn't even notice another ball had almost hit me in the head. <laughs> Gone flying straight past me into the bush again. So, of course, I had to go in there and get it. Uh, wading around in there. 
trying to find where the hell this ball was and, and that massive frequency, it just, it was still there, but it was like it was further away. The more, the closer I got to it, the further away it would get. So anyway, I found the ball, continued the game, and probably after another oh, four, 10, 15 minutes, it, it started again. And this time it was, it was louder, louder and quicker. Sherry, 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 Sherry. Like that, like it just kept going again and again. So I uh, tried to ignore it, just thinking, my God, you're crazy. You're like five years old, but you are crazy. You better not tell anyone. <laughs> uh, I was five years old, but even then I knew if you're crazy, you go to an insane asylum. Yeah. So probably best not to tell anyone. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, here in the U.S., they call that Washington and they give you a big salary. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, it would have been probably another 10, 15 minutes after that. We were, um, we kind of finished up the game. Everyone got bored and and uh, mum called us for dinner. So the boys started walking up slowly up to the house. They were probably oh, 15, 20 metres in front of me. I just kept staring at this area of bush. Like, I just, I had to know what the hell it was. So I'm sitting there staring at it as they're walking up and the voice started speaking again. But this time it was like on a completely different angle. It was like a 45 degree angle, but rebounding off trees. It's like every time I tried to find out where the source was coming from, it would change. So that confused me, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just kept listening for a few minutes and uh, uh, the next thing it said was um, my brother's well came in my brother's voice uh, I remember my brothers were actually yelling at me come on Sherry hurry up you know, time for dinner and uh, just as they've said that I've heard a perfect mimic of my oldest brother's voice now he was actually in juvenile detention at the time and he, he said my nickname in my brother's voice. Whoa. Yeah. That just made my eyes well up with tears. Um, yeah, I was pretty sad that he, my brother went away at that time. I was really, really missing him. And, and that just brought me to tears, eh? So, yeah, that freaked me the hell out. I kind of started walking away and... Brother started yelling at me again, so yeah, just started walking up after him. Kind of felt like I was being watched, you know, that whole time someone was watching me. So I've crossed the street, following my brothers, and as I've looked back into the brush, I've just seen this like this massively long, hairy arm, and it was wrapped around this massive gum tree. I say this gum tree would have had to have been almost a yard wide it was an old one very old tree yeah mm. and um yeah he was just this arm just wrapped around the tree like hey here i am <laughs> and uh, as i watched it it just kind of slid this arm back around through the bush it was just really weird <laughs> Wow. Yeah. How did you feel about uh, like being back there retrieving those balls out of the, uh, that area right about then? <laughs> well, considering my three older brothers weren't game to go in there, uh, it said something about the situation. But uh, they'd always told me there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And Bigfoot. <laughs> and, and Sasquatch. So, yeah, I just, I had that in my head. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. You know, if you freak out, something's going to happen. Yeah. Just stay calm. You know, look out for snakes. It's when you freak out that something bad happens. So, just followed those rules and, yeah, got out of there slowly. No running. <laughs> the rule is don't run unless you want something to chase you. That's it. That triggers that. <laughs> that pursue instinct from any of the predators you don't want to run it makes them want to chase you that's it they are all over it i mean why do cats chase dogs yeah i'm sorry sorry why do dogs chase dogs cats? chase cats because cats will yeah. run away and it, tr it triggers their instinct to chase them hey i get to chase something fun yay
exactly. whether they want to catch the cat or not. It's just one of <laughs> It's moving. Yeah. And a lot of times they don't want to catch the cat because when it turns around, they're like, oh, that's right. I'm chasing a cat. This was a bad idea. Yep. Fun's over. <laughs> yeah. Now there's like claws going into my nose. This hurts. I'm stopping. <laughs> uh... So yeah, I think that was the f- that was the first time that I figured out there's something out there that speaks, and that confused the hell out of me. Yeah, because there's not you know other than like parrots or something, there's not supposed to be animals that can actually talk. Yeah, exactly. And, and to make it worse, you know, typical older brothers, they uh, used to tell me stories about um, how there's hyenas in Africa. And uh, they can actually mimic your name, so they can they can mimic words that they have heard, and they'll they'll do that in the nighttime to lure you out of your tent, so that they can prey on you. Mm-hmm. That kind of confused me. You know, we don't have hyenas here. I actually thought to myself, I guess these these hairy fellows were the only ones who could, other than us, who could speak and talk. But when I told my brothers that, they used to just burst into tears and get really upset. <laughs> so I just kept it to myself. Huh. I wonder if they had like experiences or experience that they never mentioned to you. Well, that's what I was wondering for years. And I mean, even if they had of, they wouldn't have given it up. Right. Oh, no, you're not going to tell little sister that because it's bad for them to scare little sister. Oh, no, no. They were... Pff- completely fine with scaring me that was fun no i'm but, talking uh, about now they wouldn't tell you <laughs> no at that time it would have been a great idea uh, yeah let's scare the heck out of it but um yeah I, I honestly i think that they heard him i think they'd heard them before speaking and i think that's why it freaked them out so much but uh, they they wouldn't give up if they were scared you know right. what i mean they would not tell anyone if they were scared they'd just put on right. a bravado well, and the other thing is, too, they might, have, you know, if they had heard something like that, again, that would explain why they didn't want to go into the into the bush to chase the missing ball and just let you go for it. You know, <laughs> like, we don't know what's in there, but we hear something make weird noises. So, eh. oh, yeah. And yet when I go in to get the ball, that all start making weird noises and try to freak you out and scare you. But psh, that's yeah. people, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Typical people. Uh... Well, you know, it's, but even like older brothers do that to younger brothers and stuff. It's always fun to scare your siblings. So, oh, of That's course, to be expected. It's not a gender uh, <laughs> determinable thing. You know, the girls will scare the other girls. The boys will scare the other girls. Um, whatever. It's a kid thing. Yeah, in our house, it didn't go both ways. It was you got to scare the younger one. The younger ones didn't get to scare the older ones. That just wasn't on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know yeah, why. well, it's pretty hard for the younger ones to scare the older ones. That generally didn't work out too well, even when they tried. <laughs> yeah, well, I knew one good way. Just start talking about the hairy man, and they'll start <laughs> turning into teary messes. Mm. <laughs> well, that's pretty telling, and they start having that kind of reaction. There's definitely something weird going on. Yeah, and yet to this day, none of them will, um, will share any of them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what I figured. So, uh, at what point did you have your first, like, real, you know, got to see one sort of experience? Other than oh, an yes. Gump free. Yeah. Actually, I, I do apologize. I, I think I was around about the same age when this happened as well. I was probably about four or five, just heading off to school. So, I remember one day we were at my grandmother's house. She lived uh, on rural property. No, we'd, we'd gotten there. We'd been there all day and, you know, as kids do, running around being idiots. You know, we, we had a, a beautiful custard apple tree there and my grandmother loved them. That day she said, Sherry, there is one ripe custard apple and I want it, so please don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, as kids do, <clears throat> yeah. totally ignored that and took off with a custard apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, because I didn't want to get caught, I took this custard apple and walked down to our bottom paddock. Uh, Now, that's where the dam was uh, for the cows, and we just weren't allowed down there. Um, I don't know why, still to this day, don't know why we weren't allowed down there. So anyway, I just stole this apple and I've wandered down the bottom paddock, found myself a, a nice little fallen tree to sit on. 
So I'm munching away. Da, 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 da. I heard the geese coming up. Now, these geese love to attack the crap out of me. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, thought it was a fun game. So I'm eating my apple and I'm kind of trying to hide from these geese. So I run behind the dry fallen tree where all the, um, where all the leaves are. And I've just, just bobbed down, still munching away, just waiting for them to, to pass me by and keep going. So they've, they've passed us by. They're probably about one, 200 meters away. And I've popped back up, tried to sit myself back on the fallen tree right on the trunk of it. Of course, only using one hand because the other one's got a custard apple in it. <laughs> I've totally lost my balance. I've fallen backwards, landed right on my ass. And as I've fallen, my apples, custard apples, gone flying. It's rolled all the way behind me. So as I'm falling, just as I hit the ground, I hear this oh, creepy laugh. That's all I can put it at. It actually sounds a lot like uh, the laugh that you have on one of the intro intros of your show. Mm. That um, oh, I don't think I can even mimic it. Um, <laughs> kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm still falling while I hear that laugh. I land on my ass, flop onto my back, and as I've flopped onto my back, I can see my cu custard apple rolling away. And as it's rolling, I see this massive, I mean massive, it would have been like two meters tall, uh, kind of like a black blur, uh, brown blur, sorry, it was gingery. Now, if you think of someone who has red hair and freckles, right? it was, yeah, it was brown ginger really weird so there's massive big blurs run on all fours just scooped up this apple as it was rolling and kept running funny thing is i know he didn't eat that apple he kind of scooped it up and tossed it into the bushes way way into the bush so yeah he didn't want to eat it <clears throat> i think he just didn't want me there so yeah, I've, I've seen that. I'm flat on my back, seen him run past and just thought, oh no, you're in trouble. <clears throat> Somewhere where you shouldn't be. No one knows you're here. Yeah, you better get up. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> yeah, Mate, that would this... be a wise decision at that point. Wise choice, grasshopper. <laughs> Let's face it. If he eats you, no one's going to know about it. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 you'll be you'll get a spanking too because you're in a place where you shouldn't have been when you got eaten. That's the bit I feared most. Eat me, no worries. Yeah. But if the parents find out, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, exactly. Kid mentality. They'll, they'll come dig you up out of the scat and give you a spanking. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I was just really confused at that point. I was just really confused as to what I'd seen because it was running on all fours. It was still now it's running on all fours and it's still like almost two meters tall. This son, some bitch is huge. Uh, yeah, it freaked me out because the, the way I saw it, it was on all fours, but it looked as tall as my parents. Wow. Yeah, that got the heart racing a little bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, no kidding. It's like having a furry, you know, a furry horse goes running by all of a sudden. What, what was that? Yeah, but we, we had horses and it was, it just wasn't right. It didn't run like a horse. You know, it didn't have that, uh, that clop, 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 clop. It, it's front arms and its back legs kind of moved at the same time. Mm. It was more like if a person tries to run on their, their hands and legs. Mm -hmm. but its back was completely level, so its butt wasn't sticking up in the air. It's like its shoulders were actually higher than its butt. Right. And so, yeah, that's, that's what's commonly described because their proportions are different than humans are. The legs and the arms are, are different proportions to the torso than ours are, so when they get on all fours, they tend to have that same sort of... Uh, not quite as pronounced as a grill or anything, but the shoulders will actually be higher than the, the uh, hips will be. Yeah, yeah, the shoulders definitely stuck out. I mean, I guess the um, 
the hair on its arms was just really, really long. I'd never seen any animal like it, and I'd never seen any fur like it. I guess not fur. It was hair. Yeah, it's definitely hair. hair. Yeah. yeah. It was hair like, I guess, if you hadn't brushed your, your hair for two or three days, you know, it does its own thing. <laughs> I saw a clump of hair that's exactly what you're describing. It's brownish red color. It's really thick and matted and, you know, dirty looking yeah. big, big clump of hair that got pulled out at some point. It's about like five or six inches long. Yeah. And one of, one of my Bigfoot researcher friends found it in northern Minnesota. It's exactly what you're describing. Yeah, there ain't that no sounds local like local animals. No local <laughs> animals up there that are that color or have hair like that. Nothing even remotely similar. What the hell? Yeah. So, so yeah. There's no doubt where that came from. There's only one <laughs> only one not supposed to exist animal up there that could potentially have hair that looks like that. And guess who it is? Hmm. Squatchy? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, my point being here you are on the other side of the planet and you're seeing a critter with, I, you know, the same description, same hair color, same thing. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Cross-continental, too. That's that's crazy. Yeah, that's the thing that always kind of blows me away about this. It seemed to be, you know, continent to continent, there's variations and stuff, but so much mm -hmm. of it is the same. You know, I got Igor Burtsev, the Department of Hominology in Moscow, Russia, out there in Siberia finding tree structures that look the same as the ones we're finding over here. You know, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, more similar. I think more similarities and differences. Yeah, I agree. In many cases. Yeah. Yeah, and there seem to be differences, and there's, you know, there. I think there's definitely more than one variety of these things for sure, but um, mm. so much of it is similar it just makes you wonder, you know, like, yeah, like maybe that. You know, I'm not saying this is the case, but it'd be like as if the Neanderthals hadn't really gone extinct, and there were still yeah. relic populations of them hiding all over the earth, waiting for us to finally get good enough to, to like capture one or something. <laughs> you know, I'm sure like some of the governments already know they're out there and everything. They're just not talking about it. But oh, um, yeah. you know, it just it makes you wonder what these things actually are, and you know. What's up with them being everywhere? I mean, literally everywhere. You know, look at how long it's been since Australia has been connected to to Asia. It's been a long time. Obviously, <laughs> they've been there that long because they didn't take a boat. Well, assuming not. I have not seen one make and or use a boat yet. Yeah, we never have either. I mean, they're strong <laughs> swimmers, but you wouldn't expect them to make it past that many great white sharks and bone crushing crocodiles. I'm sorry. I don't think they swam there. I think they walked when there was still land to get there. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, hey? I mean, even though Indonesia is a very close, uh, close island set near us, it is still way too far to swim for yeah. anyone, for any mammal yeah. other than a sea mammal. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah well, I guess... on which science book you go by, it's been, you know, either thousands or millions of years since they had the opportunity yeah. to, to uh, make it from the mainland to Australia. So, you know, chances are, and I, I don't know if you can verify this or not, but it seems like mm. from what I heard that the uh, the local uh, the locals there, the Aborigines, say that the, uh, the, the Yowies were there when they showed up. So that puts them at like 40, 50, 60,000 years ago, at least. Uh, coming from an area where I grew up with Maori friends, uh, I listened to a lot of what their parents used to say, and mm. that's exactly what they said. They were no. here when our people showed up. Yeah, We had to it, share the land with them. Yeah, and interesting that we have the same thing in North America. All the places that the, the natives moved into, they all said, well, the Bigfoot were already here before he moved into the area. And they have the distinction between them and the giants that they didn't like and they had wars with and maneuvered back and forth and as to who lived in what area. But they even say, like, well, yeah, the Bigfoot was here before the giants showed up, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, they beat everybody here. They got the reservations. They were here for, for all squatters. Well, they've got long legs. Doesn't take them long to walk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're, they're pretty rough and, and rugged. <clears throat> 
but yeah, uh, a lot of my uh, my Maori friends, their parents would actually say things to the effect of do not engage, do not go near them. They are nothing but trouble. And the way the Maori saw them was they were very dangerous. They would pick you up, kidnap you and take you away. Well, you and think the Morho was... man over there in New Zealand is the same thing as the Yowie? I mean, the islands are pretty close. It probably is. Judging from what I have seen, just with my own eyes, I could not believe the similarity. It was mind-blowingly similar. Although the one thing I did note was longer hair. A lot longer hair. On the, the Morho man? The new, yeah, Morho, yeah. Yeah, further, further south, colder. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This was on the North Island, but it's still quite cold there. Right. And I mean, well, the North Island, wear... for people that don't know, is where they filmed a lot of the Lord of the Rings stuff. So that's what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I mean, when I'd visit my uh, grandparents over there, we lived across the road uh, from a forest. Uh, our, our marae was at the bottom of the hill, and that was completely surrounded by, by fern forest. And uh, a couple of times I'd, I'd watch them just come on down to the marae and uh, check the bins, see if there was anything good in there and <laughs> if there was something. <laughs> wait, 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 bins. Are you talking about dumpster diving? Is that what you're talking about then? Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> so in New Zealand, they're dumpster diving in the U.S. They're dumpster diving. They're dumpster divers. They're doing it everywhere. Greasy creepers. Well, I must say, they had some awesome food there, so I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 12 o'clock at night time, being hungry, I would have thought the same thing. Let's get into that fried bread. Mm -mm. Just a question <laughs> pops to mind here immediately. I've heard that that's, the North Island is pretty much where they're at. Is there any evidence or legends of them still being left anywhere else in New Zealand, or do you think that they're pretty much just North, North Island at this point? Honestly, I would say that they've got to be in the, in the South Island. Um, I've, I've spoken with a lot of people and my family who do come from the South Island and they've had experiences. I personally thought the South Island might be too cold or too far away, but it doesn't look like it stopped them to get there. Yeah. Well, again, you know, if they made it, if they walked across to Australia at the same time, they could have walked across to, uh, you know, New Zealand. So that would put them on whatever land masses were there and assuming they didn't somehow get eradicated from it, they'd still be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess just to put it into perspective for you too, um, I was in New Zealand uh, for about two weeks at a time and I would see them every evening, every oh, single God. evening that they'd, they'd come down and check the bins. And if there was nothing in there, they'd head straight back into the bush and do whatever it is they were doing. How is there no awareness that these things are there? Because you never hear reports coming out of New Zealand. There's like six of them in like the last hundred years or something. Well, I, I found the funny thing was that whenever they'd come out, it was kind of just on dusk. You know, the light was fading, but you could still see there was plenty of ambient light. Uh, there was only two properties in the area. Um, and the other property wouldn't have been able to see them where they were coming from. It was only because I like to sit outside. I prefer to be outside than rather than being in. I'd just sit outside in the evening and, you know, listen to the birds and things like that. And it was only because I was looking at in the right direction at the right time. I'd just see him saunter on by. And probably also else... you knew what you were looking for and what you were looking at. <laughs> yeah, that does help. <laughs> I mean that too. When you when you see a big black thing peeking its head out from behind a fern bush, it, it draws your attention. It draws yeah. my attention anyway. Yeah. And I noticed that they they they'd pop their head out from behind the fern trees, and I swear they were looking at me. So I'd look at them, and I'd look away, you know, out into the distance, like yeah, whatever, I don't care. You're just part of the furniture. And um, and day by day, they'd actually get more bold. You know, they, they figured out that I didn't care what they were doing, and I wasn't particularly watching them. I'd make a point not to stare, as you do with any animal, unless you want it to run away. Right. So, you know, one day they'd have nothing, and the next day they'd come down, check the bins, 
obviously there was food in there and they just cut that whole black plastic uh, a bag, you know, the big garbage bags. Mm -hmm. Just just pull that out of the bin and take it back into the bush. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about going for a wander to find all these black plastic bags and put them in the bin. Yeah, Jeez. scattered all over about 30 yards into the bush. That's it. Uh, we get the same was... thing here in the U.S. where they do the same exact thing. They'll take the whole bag, and pull it up, you know, pull it out, walk, walk off into the bushes that's far enough where you can't see them, and then they'll just scatter it all over the place, digging <laughs> through, looking for the stuff they want to eat. Well, that that was a really odd thing. I, I thought because there was no one around, there was barely any traffic, there was no one to watch them. They could literally just come and go as they please. And look, if a car happened to pass by, they could just stand still and no one would notice. Right. You know, so I, it, it it confused me why they took the whole bag. I wondered why they didn't just rummage through it while they were, they were there because there was no one in the marae. Well, force they have it. I mean, we, we get the same thing here in the U.S. where you've got people with night vision gear on stakeouts, mm. and these things are still hiding behind trees and trying to duck behind little hillocks and stuff to keep, you know, so you can't see them. Like, they're absolutely convinced we can see in the dark just as good as they can. <laughs> Even in the dark, they're trying to hide behind everything. You know, and like Bear says, if they ever figure out we can't see in the dark, we're in trouble. So don't let them know that. Raising it out. Pretend you can see them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, man, I, did you spill the beans? <laughs> not intentionally, not intentionally. Uh, I remember one one time we were going camping uh, in the four-wheel drive park, obviously, playing the four-wheel drive game. We were, um, we're all sitting around, we're just, you know, playing guitar, having a jam and whatnot, and, and uh, someone had actually noticed the terrible smell. Uh -oh. And, well... Look, to be honest, I knew this guy was there. He's the same guy who always comes to the same spot and never been any trouble whatsoever. Curious, what's the what's the smell? I've heard uh, Yowie's described with a little bit different smell of the Bigfoot here. Yeah, what was the smell like? It was just stinky pee. It was the worst pee you have ever smelt. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I do know that was just pee. <laughs> Um, he'd actually, he'd been sitting behind the thickets just watching us for a, a good two hours and cheeky little bug. He'd been um, unplugging the generator. You know, all, the, all the city kids, yeah, all the city kids wanted to listen to music and have their lights on and crap like that. So <laughs> he's kept unplugging this generator. So my other half had kept going around the back of our tent. We set up like tarps on the side for a windbreak. He kept going around the back and literally just having to plug it in again. And away we go. But I noticed every time he'd go back around there, this fella would lean right up over the brush so you could actually see his eyes shine. Yeah, so he was, <laughs> he was just watching him, trying to figure out, I think, you know, what he was doing, um, how he was playing with the generator. He was just having a fun time making him fix it again and again and again. Yeah, this is their typical <laughs> trickster behavior. Oh, this is fun. Watch him. He's going to have to come back here again. Blah. I'm going to plug it. Blah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, the look as he as he had bend over and, and watch him doing it, it was just like someone peering over a ledge, you know, trying to get a, a closer look. So it wasn't threatening or anything like that. He was just really curious. Like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. yeah, How I'll many just times plug it have you in. ever been close enough to these guys to actually smell them? Uh, many, many times. Uh, no, like I... that time, that time there, I actually, um, he'd been there for ages. He was watching us, playing his little games. And he walked away from the camp for about 30 seconds. And that made me nervous straight up. Because to me, if the hairy fellas are leaving... Or, you know, if they, they feel the need to leave, they, you better get the hell out of there. What would scare them off? Oh, good Lord. Exactly. So I've not really followed him, but I, I've just followed his footsteps at a distance in the dark. And I noticed he stopped. 
stopped and all I could hear was rushing water just trickling down a, a, a leg, basically. So it was like he was just sitting there taking a leak. <laughs> yeah, at, w- at which point I just let him go, went back to camp and sat back down. Reason I felt I asked- a bit, bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I asked about the smell of them is because generally here in the U.S. they get described as the, uh, you know, the typical um, wet dog musty odor mixed with like sewage, mixed with like, uh, you know, kind of skunk or rotting meat or something like, you know, some combination of those ones. Um, And I've actually heard three reports from Australia and incidentally, all three of them were aggressive encounters where they said it actually smelled like an electrical fire. Oh, okay. I have never smelt that, and I really don't want to. <laughs> yeah, that really creeps me out because I know what that smells like, and it, it just like uh, I don't know for some reason it like registers in my brain that if anything smells like that, it's freaking bad news. <laughs> yeah, really bad. I mean, in my experience, yeah, I've I've smelt them when they were dirty, you know. Mm-hmm. So if it hadn't rained in a long time, or I hadn't, you know, foraged in water. Right. Then they do tend to stink a bit. I mean, well, just... I caught I caught a whiff of a big one, but this was in the early spring. There wasn't any nearby water to wash off in at all, mm-hmm. and the only food source they had at the time was deer. So I'm Ugh. guessing that he was like spilling lots of blood on his hair, and he just smelled like uh, a refrigerator full of meat that had had the cord kicked out of it about two weeks earlier. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's usually how they smell before it rains. Yeah, it Stinky. was really bad. Oh, God, really bad. <laughs> really, well, yeah, I mean, just overpoweringly, like, knock you over, meat locker, full of rotting meat, sort of smell.